His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Rashid Al Maktoum is one of the world's biggest owners and breeders of thoroughbreds. And it all started here in the UK, in Norfolk, at his Shadwell Stud. His Highness bought this back in 1984, and since then it's grown to become a world-famous breeding operation. We've come here to meet some expectant mothers and to take the tour. <laughs> The Shadwell Estate incorporates six studs spread across the picturesque Norfolk and Suffolk countryside. The headquarters is Nunnery Stud, which was built in 1987 and which serves as the headquarters of the worldwide operation. As stud director Richard Lancaster explains. Shadwell was bought in 1984. Um, it, there was an existing stud uh, on the the, uh, the the estate, and uh, from that we've developed what we have today. From the beginning, it was always said um, that Sheikh Hamdam wanted to stand Group One or Classic winners here, um, horses of the highest quality uh, that he'd raced himself. Those horses are not that easy to come by. Sheikh Hamdan has some wonderful horses all around the world. How does he decide what horses stand where? I mean, it must take a while to sort of sit down and, and, and thresh it all out. The operations around the world have their different requirements. I mean, obviously, the, there's the American operation, uh, Shadwell Farm. Um, there, you know, you have a, a certain type of horse that's suited to America. Those horses normally should have raced in America. That's where people see them. And of course, the racing in uh, in America, either on the uh, now on the all weather or on the dirt, the traditional dirt, requires a different type of horse to the horse you'd see here in Europe. When you get to Europe, you know you have uh, here Shadwell and you have Derrinstown in Ireland. Well, the Irish uh, breeding operation is very much a commercial operation and therefore uh, the horses that stand at Derrinstown tend to suit that sort of market, whereas here um, there is a more traditional English uh, uh, requirement and those horses are uh, a, a more classical bred horse, uh, milers, mile and a half horse, which suits the sort of clients that we have. And how hands-on is Sheikh Hamdan? How often would he come here to oversee things? Sheikh Hamdan's very hands-on. He loves this place. Uh, he loves his horses. He uh, is very much involved in all the decisions that are made. And uh, he uh, takes a great interest. And that's why he's, uh, it's a, he's a great person to work for, because he has so much interest in the horses, what the horses are doing and where, where, they're, going to, uh, where they're going to race, where they're going to, uh, which stallions they're going to. He's involved in all these stages. Nunnery is currently home to three active stallions, Nayef, Aklam and Mawathik. And at the time of our visit, they were enjoying some downtime before the start of the European covering season. So this is Nayef, the current star of the stallions here, and he's done very well, hasn't he, in quite a short amount of time, really. Yes, he, he got off to a very good start. Uh, he had uh, spacious and, uh, and, and confront in his first crop, and we were very hopeful. Then he just slightly went a bit quiet, but this year... Um, things are looking up again. He had a nice winner the other day in France. He's had a nice filly for Sheikh Mohammed Tazde, uh, who was placed in the uh, in the Pouliche uh, and uh, and ran well in the uh, Prix Diane. So uh, uh, we're hoping he's had a lot of winners actually um, this season and is up there in the the European table. So. Uh, One's hoping that now that uh, he'll have a bit of a comeback. But uh, no, one's got to be uh, positive and, uh, and, 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 and hope that there are a, a few there waiting in the, uh, in the wings to, to, to uh, come out and do their stuff. Um, and the indications are that there's some good three-year-olds around. He is a horse that uh, his stock does take a bit of time and uh, hopefully some of those three-year-olds will go on to race at four and five as he did and, uh, and, and show star quality. 
He's had two Group 1 winners already, one of them Lady Marion, who, who raced for Godolphin in it. It must be a big relief when they get that first Group 1 winner. Yes, it is. I mean, yes, he, he, he got off to a great start with, with Tamayos and Lady Marion. And, uh, uh, and Tamayos, of course, is doing very well uh, at Derrenstown, uh, you know, as a, as a young stallion. And we have great hopes for him. Um, uh, but it's getting those first Group 1 winners. If you can get them in the first season, then it makes the jo your job much easier when it comes to, to finding clients for the stallion. And he stands for, I think, £9,000. How do you sort of set that fee? How does it work? It's very much what the market can take. It's very much dictated by the market. Um, you have to make an assessment uh, in that for that first season and hopefully get it right. Um, get, a good, uh, get a good number of mares in that first season. Uh, and then after that, once you start getting foals on the ground, once you get uh, horses uh, going through the, the ring as yearlings and once they get on the track it's very much what the market dictates. And he was an amazing race course, um, of course won a, a Shima Classic out in, in Dubai. It must have been a fairly straightforward decision with him, he gets number one spot here. Yes, I mean he and uh, he won uh, what four Group One races a, a, here in Europe, um, uh, uh, and uh, and was you know a very much a top racehorse, and he fulfilled all the criteria that we were looking for when uh, when uh, it was laid down what type of stallion would come and stand here. Don't forget also that he is a half brother to Nashwan and to to Umfwan. so uh, it. it uh, it was a bit of a no-brainer that he would come here to, to stand as a stallion with that race record as well and that breeding. So this is Aklam, who's a, a very different horse to Naif, isn't he? A lot more compact. Yes, and a, and a faster horse and, uh, and, and a horse that, uh, I mean, uh, much more resembling uh, his sire, uh, Oasis Dream. Uh, of course, he's one of the first sons of Oasis Dream uh, to, to stand at stud. And, uh, well, uh, he's got his first runners this year. And we're just waiting now, hopefully any day now, for his first winner. Um, he, was a, he was a very good racehorse. He, uh, he won the, the Jersey Stakes uh, at Royal Ascot Group 3 race. And then for, he won the... Uh, the the uh, the big mile race uh, at uh, at Goodwood and he won the Moulin, but I suppose actually he probably his best performance was when he was second uh, in the Jacques de Marois to Goldicova. Um, very good looking horse as you can see, and 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 people have been very taken with his uh, uh, with his yearlings last year at the sales. So. Uh, let's hope we get some uh, two-year-old winners and uh, and then he'll be on the way but you know he's now at a stage where we've promoted him we've done everything we can now it's really in the lap of the the the, the performance of his offspring whether he makes it or not yeah it's a bit of a, a nervous time at, at the moment <laughs> uh, for you all but what, what's his, his temperament like because he's standing here as, as, as good as gold no, he's a, he's a lovely horse. He's a real gentleman and uh, uh, I always remember, I mean, uh, he was uh, trained by William Haggis and uh, they all loved him in the yard because he has, a, 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 you know, a, a lovely temperament. And he had a few problems when he was in training, a few niggles and things, And uh, but uh, he, he uh, was the perfect patient and uh, no, uh, as you can see, a lovely horse and lovely bold eye. Um, uh, and, and, and a, a really nice horse to have around. And what would his daily routine be like at the moment? Because you were telling me earlier they go a lot on, on the horse walker. Yes, I do. in the build-up to the covering season, a stallion has to be fit to, 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 to be able to withstand the, the, the pressures of the covering season. The, uh, they will, uh, the, the stallions will, will go on the horse walker. It'll build up to the start of the season when they'll be on it for about half an hour. Um, they go out every day and uh, they uh, sort of if, 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 if they keep themselves f sort of pretty fit through the season then uh, after the season they have a bit of a letdown but uh, and then through the autumn they've they're just sort of kept uh, ticking over and then back into the routine so 
the last one we're going to have a look at uh, is Mauer Thiek, a really nice horse on the track for, for Marcus Dragoning. He's one of the newer ones again. At the moment, he's got yearling, so a bit too soon to tell, I suppose. Yes, he had some nice foals last year, um, and uh, but uh, this is crunchier, and uh, see how uh, people take to his yearlings when they appear at the sales. Um, actually, we have a number of homebreds, so uh, the, 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 I haven't actually seen any yearlings this year because I haven't been to Ireland. But uh, he's um, he's a horse that uh, um, was quite a late developer. He had a few problems uh, as a yearling, which sort of held him back. And uh, he uh, was trained by Marcus, and uh, um, he won the Cumberland Lodge. Uh, he uh, and uh, but I suppose his best performance was actually though a second uh, in the champion uh, stakes to twice over, um, just beaten. And if I think if he'd probably had a clearer run, he'd have probably won that. Um, the main interest with this horse is, of course, that he was one of the last Danzigs, and he's uh, half brother to Gennati, um, out, out of a sister to to, to Naef, uh, uh, Nashwan, and Umfwan. So he's bred in the purple. So uh, uh, we've got high. We've got to have uh, high hopes that he will uh, produce uh, something as good, if not better, than himself. And were the high hopes shared by the breeders? Was he well supported in his, his first year? He he I, he wasn't uh, one of them. It, it, he doesn't fit the bill for the modern commercial breeders. I mean, one has to be honest about that. Um, he he was held up, so he didn't he couldn't run at two. Uh, so he he didn't uh, have a chance to show uh, sort of uh, any form at two, which is one thing that commercial breeders are very keen on. They want that precocious type of horse. The other thing was that you know he's quite he's quite a a, a big horse, and even when he got just on the course, he was he, he took a bit of time to to find his best form. So um, it, it, we have heavily supported him and uh, I, I think uh, you know his success depends on on very much uh, one or two of the homebreds coming through and demonstrating uh, th their ability but a very very good looking horse and uh, a lovely stamp of a horse. What is it about him physically that makes him him so correct I mean I, I'm not a, a confirmation expert but but what is it that you, that you really look for in a in, in a horse or even in a potential stallion? He's got, you know, you look at his eye and his head. He's got a lovely head, lovely bold eye. He's got good limbs. Um, you know, you're carrying quite a heavy sort of frame there. So you've got to have the limbs to, to, to take that, especially when they're, they're galloping at, 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 at speed. Obviously, as a stallion, he's carrying a bit of weight. But even even you could see as a racehorse, he, he's got quite a, a sort of uh, a, a strong top and a good line. You want a good line. And you want good quarters, because that actually, at the end of the day, is where the strength comes from. A nice sloping shoulder, so you get a good stride, and that's what you're, you're really looking for. Shadwell is also the home of retired stallion Green Desert. Now 30 years old, the prolific stakes producer and broodmare sire lives out his days in the splendour of the stallion barn and his own paddock. Reluctantly leaving nunnery, we headed next to nearby Snare Hill Stud, Shadwell's pre-training and rehabilitation centre. As many as 200 horses are resident here at any one time, including yearlings, injured horses and those being prepared for the sales. Both purebred Arabians and thoroughbreds are handled by the Snare Hill team. And we were treated to a swimming display by a three-year-old daughter of Kahala Classic winner Majani. I'm in the rehabilitation and pre-training yard, one of several rehabilitation and pre-training yards here at Shadwell, and Dennis is going to explain a little bit about it. You say you have up to 100 or more than 100 horses here at, at any time. You must be absolutely swamped. So just tell us a little bit about what goes on. We bring in most of Sheikh Hamdam's injured horses from training, so they'll do the box rest here. They'll do all the walking and trotting exercise here and some cantering before they go back to the trainers. They're constantly assessed by the vets here and we monitor their injuries and how they're recovering. We've seen one filly in, in the swimming pool this morning. How important is that with the rehabilitation process? It's very important. It enables us to get exercise into the horses 
before they're ready to do any ridden work. And so even if they're in walking for six weeks, we can get them in the pool and be swimming them in that time. Helps keep them fit, helps keep the freshness off the horses and a lot easier to manage. We also saw a, a horse on the, the treadmill. I mean, I know that's something we see a lot in, in Dubai. Again, something that's obviously very important for you. Very important as well. We can get a lot of exercise into them, controlled exercise and a nice even surface, no one on their back. And it's very, very good. It's very easy on the horses They cope their legs and injuries cope much better on the treadmill than they do when they've been ridden. And how does it work? Would a trainer perhaps have a horse that might have got injured, they'd ring you up and say, have you got room for it? Or, or would Sheikh Hamdan decide this horse needs a break? No, the trainers would liaise with our racing office and then they'd tell us just X horse in with the trainer, it needs to be picked up, bring it back to Shadwell. It's got fractured knee, chip in its fetlock, a high suspensor injury, all those type things. And you mentioned that, uh, that a lot of the Dubai, or all the Dubai Carnival horses come here first. Why is that? They just come to be checked over, make sure they're fit to travel and they've got no injuries which would preclude them from racing when they get there. And you also deal with, with purebred Arabians, as we saw from our swimmer earlier on. You deal with Arabians and thoroughbreds alike, I, I imagine. Yeah, both the same. They all come here to be broken. They all come here to have rehab after injury. So we don't do much different with either, either group. And tell us about some of the success stories, because there must have been some stars over the years that have been through here and gone back to the track and done well. Yes, we've had a lot of good horses here. We've had many Guineas winners, especially Phillies, Lahan, Harrier, Salsaville, Shadayid, they all came through here. And we've had some good thoroughbred horses, um, Mutaman, Laheb, Alamar. Last year we had a, a yearling we broke here called Garour, who won the richest two-year-old race in Europe. So we've had quite a few, yes. Although Snare Hill has its own training track and grass gallop, it also makes use of the beautiful Shadwell Park, where horses can exercise in the splendid shadow of Shadwell Court, a Grade 1 listed building also owned by Sheikh Hamdan. This is Elmswell Park Stud and it's home to His Highness Sheikh Hamdan's private mares. There's around 18 brood mares and foals here at the moment and most of them were brought into the world via these foaling boxes. Beautiful, spacious, they've got cameras in each corner to make sure that absolutely nothing goes amiss. Loads of grazing here, everything that a newborn foal might want. And of course when they're born they wear these. How cute is this? Let's go and meet some foals. Such stars as Haft, Tamayas and Lahan were bred here. And we went to meet the 2005 Oaks winner Ezwara, whose current foal at foot is a friendly colt by Dubawi. Ezwara has already produced the Group 1 placed Mr Greeley filly for Doors, so this little fellow's future looks rosy. Of course, as well as the stallions, His Highness Sheikh Hamdan also has a number of his own broodmares. And a lot of those are managed by Arthur Bell, who's in charge of the private studs. I mean, this is just a, a beautiful place. What a nice place to come to work. Well, it is. It's, uh, it's certainly unusual. It's, um, I've been here for 28 years for Sheikh Hamdan. And it's been a pleasure to work for Shadwell and Sheikh Hamdan over the years. I've seen many animals come and go, uh, bred many classic winners. And yes, it's, it's a very interesting job delivering foals and seeing them rise to fame. It is amazing, you know. Um, it's something you never tire of. And earlier on, we were lucky enough to see Eswara with her foal, and you were telling me she was actually born and brought up here. Yes, Eswara was born here many years ago, uh, the great Midway lady. Uh, very weak foal, as I remember, could hardly walk. Um, took a lot of time to get it going in the paddocks. Uh, he, you would never have thought it could be a classic winner, but you obviously never know, do you? She's got a great heart, very strong. And just in this paddock behind us, we've got a UAE, a 1,000 guineas winner, no less, in Mawakla. She's uh, in the centre there and uh, is a really, really nice mare. Tell us about her, because uh, she was a little bit unsure at first, but then she sort of calmed down after a while with us being here. She's, yeah, the mare herself is, is she's a very good temperament mare. She's no problem to look after. She's very good with the foals. Uh, she is the dominant factor in the field. Uh, you notice they all go round her. She produces good, strong foals. That was a very large foal when it was born. Uh, obviously, you know, it does take the weight of the mare slightly, but uh, she looks very well now, and uh, they're both doing great. Tell us what their daily routine is like for these mares and foals. Obviously, they're out here at the moment, plenty of space, plenty of grazing. Is that the case for them every day? 
Uh, it depends on the time of year and weather conditions and everything else. Um, when the foals are very young and they come to us first, we have to develop them slowly. We sort of move them on as the foals strengthen. And as they strengthen, then we put them into groups. So, because they're, you know, they're herd animals and they like to be in groups. If you segregate them, then they're never happy. They're more settled when you get them in groups. They come in on a daily basis through the bad weather. Once we get to April, end of April, and the weather is, is more amenable to the animals, they like to live out. So we leave them out because they, you know, they are naturally herd animals that like to be out. Um, we then also bring them in on a regular basis to handle them. And as you see, they handle very well. Uh, you can do anything with these foals. They are fed out daily as well. They come in for veterinary or farrier or whatever. But in the main, we try to live them out. And then later on in their lives, they'll go over to, to Ireland, to Derrinstown, to continue their, their upbringing there? Yeah, they'll ship to Derrinstown to our sister stud. Uh, they are, then they, they go in a weaning program, obviously the oldest foals first, and they normally start a weaning program in the end of July. Uh, so we like to get them over there, get them settled, because then they have to build their immune system up to, to the land over there uh, before they are weaned, because sometimes weaning is, is slightly stressful, you know. So if, if they're over there for a month and they get used to the ground and the pick up, they'll build their, build their immune system. And when they get to the age of sort of four and a half, five months, they naturally kind of wean themselves. You'll see them in the fields, the mares will be one side of the field, the foals will be the other side of the fields. They're quite self-sufficient. So it's not, really, it's not that bad, you know. It's just a matter of getting more back. <laughs> we fold quite a lot, so there's quite a lot to get over there. And then it all starts again the following year. It must be very, very sort of a, a hectic job. But what's the best part of it for you? What do you en enjoy the most? Um, I've over all the years that I've worked for Shikam Dan, I've always brought the foals into life and delivered them. Um, and you never get tired of seeing that. You know, you know, giving birth, uh, seeing the foal stand, suckle and nurse with its mother, and then develop, and then watching them on the racetrack, and then feel proud that you've been a part of that. It is, you know, it's a great achievement to see classic winners that you fold. Uh, there's not many people can say that, really. <laughs> Leaving Elmswell behind us, we journeyed into Suffolk and Salsabil Stud, which has capacity for 80 stables and which was up and running under the Shadwell banner in 2001. Salsabil, named after one of Sheikh Hamdan's greatest ever mares, is home to several stars of the current broodmare band, including Delau, Dam of 2000 Guineas and Prix Jacques Le Marois winner, Macby. She shares a paddock with Alish, who produced Group 1 winner and Derrinstown resident, Tamayas. Before we said goodbye to Shadwell, there was something a little different in store. One thing you might not know about Sheikh Hamdan is that he also breeds cattle, and not just any cattle. These behind us are Pedigree, Aberdeen, Angus, and Robert is the senior stockman here who's going to tell us more about them. Didn't really expect to see them here, and how did it all come about? Uh, I think they were originally uh, bought here as a management tool on the grass. If the grass gets away from the horses and need someone to eat it rather than just cut it, and uh, cattle do a good job. Um, grazing so uh, and they put a lot back into the grass as well and a bit like his horses Sheikh Hamdan doesn't just have rubbish ones these are a top quality cattle and they actually go to shows and, and things like that yeah they're purebred Aberdeen Angus um, well known for the quality of the meat uh, that comes from them. we show them all over the country and uh, have particular success uh, this year we've won the supreme champion at Perth uh, sterling bull sales uh, which is the highest accolade really we can um, go for so we've done well there and every show we've done this year so far we've done five we've had champions at every show so we've done well and what what makes a good showing cow or, or bull I, I don't know too much about it uh, if you look at the ones behind us we, the heifer in particular is uh, she's very feminine she's pretty she's good loin with a beef animal you're looking for meat so you want to look across the top line, which is where the expensive meat is. Um, the back end, she's square on all four, all four feet. Uh, good spring of rib. She's deep bodied, so she can carry a calf. Um, so that's the, the main things. And they need to have a bit of character, a bit of sparkle about them, similar to horses, really. 
But just to reassure people, she's a top show animal, so she's not going to be ending up on anyone's no, dinner plate. She's not going to be eaten, she'll be bred from. Um, so, yep, yeah, she's worth too much to, to end up on a dinner plate. From cows to colts, Shadwell is just that little bit different. The next time you see a horse run carrying the famous blue and white silks, there's a good chance that he would have started out right here.